Hello everyone and welcome back to Med with Made Simple. This video is about Dracunculus medinensis, which is also known as guinea worm. Before starting this video, I'd like to thank you all for 600 subscribers. I hope I'll reach 1000 subscribers very soon. So Dracunculus medinensis. Dracunculus medinensis is a somatic nematode. Now we're talking about Dracunculus medinensis in detail in this video. Before starting to talk about that in detail, I'd like to show this picture to you guys. As you can see here, in this picture, a person is trying to extract an adult worm from the ankle of a person. Interesting, right? So, extracting a worm is not so simple as it seems in this picture, because the worm may be wrapped around some important structures such as blood vessels or nerves, and when you try to pull it, it may damage the nerve or blood vessel, so you need to carefully extract the worm. Now, I am sure that this would have increased your interest. Now, Without delaying much, we'll get into the video. Watch it till the end to know all the things you must know about Dracunculus medinensis. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. So first, let's talk about the host of the infection. The definitive host of Dracunculus medinensis infection is man. The intermediate host which is involved in transmission of the infection to man are the copepods or the cyclops, which are present in the water bodies from which the man present in that region consumes water from. Okay, so in the life cycle of the Dracunculus medinensis worm, the infective form of the worm is actually the L3 larva, which is called as filariform larva. Now this is a must know thing for you guys. So I'm going to show you a picture of L3 larva. This is how an L3 larva of Dracunculus medinensis worm looks like under a microscope. The mode of transmission of the infection, how do you get this infection? It's so obvious. The copy pots or cyclops are present in the drinking water in a community and when the people present in that region consumes the drinking water, uh, consumes the water containing uh, copy pots, they obviously get the infection. So this is how the cyclops or the copy pots actually looks like under a microscope. So this picture is taken from CDC. It shows the life cycle of the Dracunculus medinensis worm. The first step is in the top of this picture. As you can see here, humans get the infection by drinking water which is not filtered and which is contaminated with copy pots or cyclops. Now the thing should make sense here. As I've told you earlier, the infective form of the worm is actually L3 larva. This stage, if present in the cyclops, will actually cause infection in man. To make it clear, just uh, listen to me carefully. The cyclops which contain L3 larvae of the Dracunculus worm, if consumed by humans, will cause infection. That's why the L3 larva or the filariform larva is called as the infective form of the worm. Okay, I hope you got it. If you didn't get it, please rewind for the previous 10 seconds and listen to it. The second step, uh, what happens after that is, when the cyclops are ingested by the human beings, when they reach the stomach, they actually die in the stomach and they release the um, release the larva in the stomach. The final form larva are released into the stomach. Now in the stomach and intestine, uh, these larva are capable of penetrating the stomach and intestinal wall and they can mature and they get converted into adult worms. In the third step, you can see few red streaks of lines which are marked over the lower limb of the person, right? So these represent the migration of the adult worms to distal peripheral cooler sites such as the ankle most commonly. Look at the third step written over here. Fertilized female worm migrates to surface of skin causes a blister most important thing. Before the release of worm there will be formation of blisters over the ankles. And before the appearance of worm what appears is the larvae of the worm which are microscopic in nature. See the fourth step right here. In this stage, a blister is formed and it has ruptured to release the L1 larvae from the blister site. If this person gets into contact with the water body from which the community drinks water, what happens is the L1 larvae from his body starts to get released into the water body again. And in the fifth step, the cyclops which are present in that water body consumes this L1 larvae and the life cycle starts again. 
Inside the cyclops, these L1 larvae will undergo molting to get converted into L2 and then once again molting to convert it into the third stage larva or phyleriform larva. And when the human drinks the water which contains the cyclops, which in turn contain the L3 larvae, he actually gets the infection. Now this keeps on going. You may find this quite confusing, but I bet you if you're gonna rewind this video once again and you're gonna watch it once again or twice or thrice, and if you're gonna pause this slide right here and you observe the life cycle flowchart shown over here, which is oversimplified by the CDC, you're gonna get this very easily. Trust me, all right? So let's move on. The incubation period of uh, Dracunculus infection is about one year. As you all know, incubation period is the time when the causative organism enters your body till the time when the first symptoms or signs starts to appear. In this case, the first symptom or sign which is going to appear is the appearance of the worm. Okay, so once a person consumes uh, the contaminated water containing cyclops, uh, he may be normal for about one year. He may just be developing some papules or blisters. All right. So just after about one year, this adult worm starts to appear from the blister sites. As I've told you, the first things which appear over the ankles are papules which are about 0.5 cm in size. And these papules grow in size and they develop into blisters which are comparatively larger lesions. Now I'm showing this picture once again, the picture which I've shown you earlier. In this picture, this person would have had a small papule which he would have left unnoticed and then this papule would have slowly increased in size to develop into a blister and this blister would have ruptured and would have started to release small L1 larvae into the water or into the external environment and that would also be not seen by naked eye and in this stage actually this is uh, this would have taken about one year from the point of contact with the cyclops for this person because why I'm saying that is here you can see that the, a person can actually remove an adult worm from the blister so for an adult worm to appear from the blister it would take about one year from the point from the point of contact with the cyclops okay so moving on there are also other symptoms such as fever nausea vomiting pruritus which means itching and erythema which is redness around the sites of infection overall the patient will feel sick there are various complications of this infection first of all the patient can develop sepsis he can develop abscesses and the local joints which are present near the blister sites may get involved and arthritis may occur now let's talk about the diagnosis part it's very obvious whenever you see adult worms coming out from the blisters it confirms the presence of the infection. L1 larvae can be seen with the help of microscopy. ELISA can be done. And eosinophilia confirms the presence or at least gives a clue on the presence of uh, Dracunculus infection. Now let's talk about individual things in a bit detail. Whenever you see, see a blister, most commonly in the peripheral side such as ankles, and when you see that blister rupturing and when you see an adult worm coming out of it, it gives a clue of Dracunculus medinians, medin medinensis mostly. I'm sorry. Uh, whenever you see a blister but you don't see a worm uh, over the side of ankle, when you take the fluid from it and you observe in a microscope, if you see L1 larvae in it, it also helps you in diagnosing the condition. ELISA test is obviously, I know you guys will be having an idea about ELISA test. In this test, you will be detecting antibodies against the worm in the patient's serum. Eosinophilia re reveals an hypersensitivity reaction uh, due to the presence of worm in the body and uh, or at least due to, the, um, due to the reaction of the body to the worm which leads to an increase in the peripheral blood eosinophil count. Okay, these are the clues which helps in diagnosing Dracoculus medinensis infection. Now let's talk about the treatment. First of all, worm removal. 
than symptomatic treatment. So, when a person comes with a uh, yeah, blister which has ruptured and you can see worms moving around the side, you just can't put your hand and just pull it off just like that because as I told you in the beginning of this video, these worms would be wrapping up around important neurovascular structures such as important nerves and vessels present over the region. So you need to carefully remove the worms, um, you need to take very various precautions in removing the worms and I'm not talking about the diesel on the steps of worm extraction in this video but you need to know that you need, be, you need to be pretty cautious on removing the worm from the site. And symptomatic treatment includes some heart fermentation and uh, preventing uh, secondary infections by, uh, by, by proper hygiene over the blister sites. And, uh, uh, it can give non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs to relieve pain and goes like that. And it's also mentioned that uh, there are no specific or highly specific or highly active anti-helminthic drugs to treat Dragoncolus medinensis infection. Prevention of the infection can be done by providing safe drinking water, cyclops control, and health education to the people. You must also treat all the cases in the community. So the main aims of all these steps of prevention is to cut down cyclops present in the drinking water of the community and when you educate the people, they'll be aware that they should filter the water so that the, the, so that the cyclops which are present in the water will be removed and that reduces the chance of getting the infection. And when you treat all the cases, that will also prevent the spread of the infection to the other people and you must educate them that if they have blisters which are ruptured and show signs of Dracunculus medinensis, they should not get into contact with uh, the water body from which the community drinks water from. So these are the steps which are helpful in preventing the infection. And many countries of the world have now successfully eradicated Dracunculus medinensis infection because of various successful national programs and preventive measures which are followed by the people over there. So we came to the end of this video. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and you can watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to leave a like to this video and share this video to your friends and as always stay tuned for more videos and don't forget to subscribe as well.